Well, do you remember all of those volunteers in Ukraine? Those bloodthirsty mercenaries from armies around the world who showed up and tried to join the Ukrainian military in attacking Russia? Like they saw the opportunity like, oh, I get to go fight some Russians. I'm going to join up. Right. Well, it didn't turn out so well. So stunningly, the New York Times is out with a new article today showing just how bad it is. Many of them liars, crooks, and total opportunists in order to rip people off and defraud people. Like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to Ukraine. Will you send me some money and I'll just rip you off? Like, that's exactly what happened. So, unbelievably, rare moment here from the mainstream media, the New York Times doing a whole in-depth piece interviewing hundreds of people for this article about basically the corruption of these mercenaries in Ukraine. It's kind of a stunning thing. Ouch, here's the headline. Stolen valor. The U.S. volunteers in Ukraine who lie, waste, and bicker. I'll read the, the, the subline headline there. People who would not be allowed anywhere near the battlefield in a United States-led war are active on the Ukrainian front with ready-to-access American weapons. Ouch. This piece is actually pretty amazing. I encourage you all to read it. Here are a you few... Know, key, uh, here are, well, the, go ahead. I was just going to say really quick, the fact that you're saying that they're lying, cheating, and all that stuff tells me it, if they didn't get paid by people to go over there, like, those are people that wouldn't have been able to afford to go over there on their own, most likely. Right? You would so think. someone yeah. is covering them living there. Yeah, there's some sort of money going. There, there's definitely a flow of money, and there's a lot of extra money to be had and stolen and put in bank accounts um, and the wed wedding of the whistle, right? I mean, there's something absolutely going on here. But all you need to look at is like FTX to know where, like the money laundering going on here. So this piece is pretty amazing. Here are a few key paragraphs, so I do want to read directly from this New York Times piece. Quote, Now after a year of combat, Many of these homespun groups of volunteers are fighting with themselves and undermining the war effort. Some have wasted money or stolen valor. Others have cloaked themselves in charity while also trying to profit off the war, records show. One retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel from Virginia is the focus of a U.S. federal investigation into the potentially illegal export of military technology. <laughs> so basically stealing the weapons in Ukraine and then sending it off to other spots. Okay. A former army soldier arrived in Ukraine only to turn traitor and defect to Russia. A Connecticut man who lied about his military service has posted live updates from the battlefield, including his exact location, and boasted about his easy access to American weapons. A former construction worker is hatching a plan to use fake passports to smuggle in fighters from Pakistan and Iran. And in one of the more curious entanglements, this is my favorite, one of the largest volunteer groups is embroiled in a power struggle involving an Ohio man who falsely claimed to have been both a U.S. Marine and a Longhorn Steakhouse assistant manager. By the way, I, w I wonder which one he lied about. The dispute also involves a years-old incident on Australian reality television. <laughs> like, it's an unbelievable story. And, like, the New York Times kind of just cracks the surface on some of this. But I want to go through some of the deep parts of this because it's, it's really interesting. So... Uh, this guy, here's a guy, um, they specifically, to, uh, now after a year of combat, uh, many of these homespun groups of volunteers are fighting with themselves and undermining the war effort. Some have wasted money or stolen valor. They point out this Connecticut man. So keep this up on the screen. This Connecticut man who lied about his military service has posted live updates from the battlefield, including ex exact location and boasted about his easy access to American weapons. So who is this guy? This guy is James Vasquez, according to the New York Times. Here he is dressed up pretending to play army. <laughs> now, accor now, according, I love when these guys put on like helmets and like. You uh, guys get that joke? Army. Hey, brother, I'm going I'm, to army. I'm joining army. No, Arrested it's from Arrested Development. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buster. I'm, I'm in army. I'm a member I of army. I have to go off to army. I, I fight in army. <laughs> <laughs> um, so according to the New York Times, days after the invasion, Mr. Vasquez, a Connecticut home improvement contractor, announced that he was leaving for Ukraine to much fanfare because his local newspaper wrote a whole glowing tale of him. 
He was a former army staff sergeant who left behind his job and family and picked up a rifle and a rucksack on the front lines to fight Russia. And then he started posting battlefield videos online at least one broadcasting his unit's precise location to everyone, including Russia. He posted that he'd personally taken out seven Russian tanks. So this guy told everyone. Pers- he, personally took him out? Yeah. That he. Sorry. Wow. Uh, yeah. Set, he took out seven no Russian price. tanks. I, I don't know how many of you had help. You know, maybe he had out some help, right? But I don't yeah. think even Captain America does that. No, not even with the shield, like bouncing it off. No, he. Yeah, he helped take out seven Russian tanks. I don't know if he did it with his bare hands. I don't know how he did it. He's like Rambo. Uh, He used his story to solicit donations. Quote, I was in Kuwait during Desert Storm. Quote, I was in Iraq after 9-11, Mr. Vasquez said in a fundraising video. Here he is. I managed to get my hands on that fundraising video before it's taken down, by the way. I'm sure it'll be deleted very soon. Uh, here he is uh, ra- uh, raising money, telling lies about his service. Notice, no, I want you to watch and watch his like, I don't know, this this army veterans asking him questions, just basic questions about his service. And you can tell like he's spinning, spinning wheels. Like, what can I say? What can I say? How many lies am I in right now? Watch this. Prior to your civilian life, were you in the military in the U.S.? Yeah, I was in the United States Army. Okay, for how long? Uh, collectively for 14 years. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Four years active and uh, six years uh, reserve mm-hmm. and four years IRR. So. Okay, cool. So and during that time, did you have any like deployments, uh, any combat? Yeah, I, I was in uh, Kuwait during the desert storm and I was in Iraq um, after 9-11 and, uh, and, you know, got back out. And, yeah, I, I was out for eight years, and then after 9-11, I went back in, and then I uh, then I got out again, and uh, oh. so now this is, uh, this is a whole different animal right yeah. now. Yeah, so I guess, so even before Ukraine, we, we need to thank you uh, for protecting America, so thank you very much for that. My honor. Uh, and now we are in Prashadik, which is the main street of, of Kyiv. Uh, from what I saw last, you had gone back to the U.S. after fighting in Irpin, Bucha, and on the front lines in Donbass for... Yeah, I mean, you can only be here for, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually trying to get uh, some uh, a visa over here, but you can only be here for... Uh... Yeah, you can only be here for so long. And, uh, you know, as people in the chat pointed out, he also fought in World War Four. So he's been all, he's, he fought, he fought in Korea. This guy's done everything. I mean, it's pretty amazing what this guy has done. Um, he's really like a, he's, he's, he's like a Renaissance man. He's uh, an urban legend. He looks younger than me. Right. But he was really military age anytime for yeah. Iraq. I, I think anytime there, there's an interview going on where somebody's like claiming military service, that interview should always be done by somebody who's been in the military. Because it'll take them about 30 seconds to sniff out that the person doesn't have any idea what they're talking about. Because they'll ask simple questions well, that like, guy, what was your MOS? Yeah. Where were you stationed? And stuff like that. And then they won't have any idea. Because yeah. it's like there's so many acronyms and the language is so specific. Yes. That it would take them about 30 seconds to figure it out. Hmm. Yeah. I once tried to make a reservation for my... Uh, oh, did he? So mm-hmm. um, I once tried to make a reservation for my stepdad, who's a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> and they're like, what's his discharge number and this, you know, infiltrate? And I was just like, can't. Can't do it. Like, you can't fake that. I'm going to have to have him call back. Never mind. We'll take the back of the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It um, was for like a discount for travel. Anyway. Yeah. And he's a hero, by the way. I mean, this guy he was dealing with like, yeah. Agent he was or- literally like, exposed literally. to Agent, Agent, Agent Orange. Orange and like awful, awful stuff that he had to, you know, extractions, uh, e- extractions in Vietnam via helicopter. Like that was his job. Like after disasters, they would swoop in. So mm-hmm. uh, when yeah, he Grimm says is, my Grimm honor, when that guy's of- go ahead. Oh, as you say, Grim is calling out in our in our uh, our production chat that he said, "Yeah, he looks pretty young for a guy who was in Ves- Desert Storm because Grim was in Desert Storm and he was ah. in his mid twenties." Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So yeah, he's been through it all. This guy, right? <laughs> anyway, so I wonder how much money he raised, like you know, on these fundraisers, right? Making all this money. So when the Times asked about his false military service claims, he immediately deactivated then his Twitter account. So the New York Times was like, hey, we'd like so, some questions about your military service. Uh, then he deleted his Twitter account. Oh, okay. Um, and he said that he might have to leave Ukraine because the authorities had discovered that he was fighting without a military contract. 
He's like, I'm deleting my Twitter account, not because the New York Times is asking me tough questions. No, because Ukraine is concerned that I might be fighting without a military contract, as if Ukraine gives a rat's ass about paperwork. Are you kidding me? Ukraine is concerned about dotting T's and crossing J's? Other way, yeah, that. If Ukraine cares about paperwork, that is the most hilarious thing I've ever heard. They literally have Al-Qaeda and ISIS fighters in their ranks. They care about paperwork. They care about this guy fighting and he didn't get all of his paperwork done in time. Come on. You think they care about that? But my favorite part in this New York Times piece, though, is has to do with the most famous U.S. volunteer, which is MSNBC's Malcolm Nance. Now, here's a guy right from the beginning on this show we called BS on this guy. Uh, the whole thing was propaganda from the beginning. We played you the videos right from the moment that he left MSNBC. He was like, I'm done being an MSNBC analyst. I'm going to fight Ruskies. Ruskies? Bruskies? No. Ruskies. Well, I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm going to fight Russians. They probably call them commies, to be fair. Okay. I guess, yeah. Because that's even probably what not, they think of them. Yeah, even though they think they're still communists. Okay. So yeah. for some context here, one year ago, Malcolm Nance was an anchor, an analyst for MSNBC, suddenly announced he was leaving MSNBC to join the fight against Russia with the Ukrainian International League. He posted a photo of himself in fatigues in Ukraine, again, dressing up, playing army, with the self-aggrandizing headline, quote, I'm done talking. I'm done talking. Now I'm here. Here he is telling MSNBC's Joy Reid about it. Somehow they managed to have a full camera crew in Ukraine at the time at two in the morning in the forest to cover this announcement from, from Malcolm Nance. Watch. Why you are there and what you are doing. Well, as you know, I spent quite a bit of time here in the pre-war period. And when the invasion happened, I had friends who were in Donetsk, who were in the Ukrainian army, who were writing to us and telling us, we're not going to survive tonight. We've been hit 500 times. Uh, you know, these are graduates at Defense Language Institute. These are my friends. And, you know, as the more I saw of the war going on, the more I thought, I'm done talking. All right. It's time to take action here. So uh, about a month ago, I joined the International uh, Legion. Yeah. So that was the propaganda MSNBC was pointing out. And then, of course, if you needed some context, though, Caitlin Johnstone has a great write-up of this. In case you're unaware, she writes, Malcolm Nance has an extensive history of telling brazen lies to advance the interest of the U.S. empire and has suffered no professional consequences as a pundit on MSNBC for doing so. As journalist Glenn Greenwald has documented over the years, Malcolm Nance includes making the objectively false claim on MSNBC that former Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein has, has a show on Russia Today television, falsely asserting that WikiLeaks documents published ahead of the 2016 election were riddled with obvious forgeries. They were not. And falsely accused Greenwald himself of being an agent of Trump and Russia, who is in the deep Kremlin pocket. The New York Times says Nance has left Ukraine, um, and he's continuing to raise money. He's been raising money with a whole bunch of shady people. And apparently, you know, he says he's done talking, but he's been doing pl plenty, of, uh, plenty of talking because he's pissed off a lot of people in Ukraine, apparently, according to the New York Times. Mr. Nance has left Ukraine but continues fundraising with a new group of allies. One of them, Ben Lackey, is a former Legion member. He told his fellow volunteers that he was once a Marine and wrote on LinkedIn that he had most recently been an assistant manager at Longhorn Steakhouse. In fact, the Pentagon said he had no military experience and he worked as a server at the steakhouse. In an interview, Mr. Lackey said that he had lied about being a U.S. Marine. So he's never in the Marines. So he could join the Legion, fight Russians. As noble as that seems, it's not actually helpful <laughs> to have someone who's not trained like you fighting trained? with you. Oh, we're going out there tomorrow. You know what you're doing? No. Then we're all going to get hurt. Do you understand these basic I'm, maneuvers that you learn? In, no, you like, don't. The, okay. the, the, the web I still of lies can't. here. The web of lies. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I was just going to. The web of lies here. Like, if he's over there, not only can he not fight because he was never a Marine, but what if they ask him to make a steak? He's like, oh, actually, I was only a server. <laughs> I can bring you the steak. <laughs> but I still can't stop thinking about the construction worker. It That's said good. a construction worker was going to get illegal passports and bring people in from other countries to fight like where does this guy have these kind of connections pakistan and iran yeah i don't know it's getting and like they're not fake asking passports. questions 
Yeah. Again, how does he get all this experience working at Longhorn Steakhouse? Right, but you saw people get themselves worked up online around these avatars. Right. So, you know, like, oh, this is what this is the spirit of the world, but these people are actually physically going, right? And sort of saluting them on Twitter and, you know, resharing this as their American heroes. Like, you should really question what made you share that without questioning it then, if you're the kind of person who did. Like, we're glad you're here. Uh, do you have all those uh, grenades? Did you bring a whole bunch of grenades? No, but I brought, I brought a blooming onion. Mm, that's that the wrong place. It's like long? Vern from Stand long? By Me. Strong I brought the comb. Wrong place, huh? <laughs> uh, anyway unbelievable that and we're not done this new york times piece is amazing uh, but kind of tangentially tied to it they managed to not really talk about this in the piece but the gateway pundit did a good job douchebag uh crybaby adam kinzinger uh the warmonger who wants nuclear war with russia uh who cried about january 6th according to the gateway pundit this morning adam kinzinger linked to a pro-ukrainian organization which allegedly scammed people out of millions of dollars so there he is. That's uh, that's James Vasquez right over his shoulder with his arms right around Adam Kinzinger right there. Uh, friend of the show, Jordan Schachtel, broke this story, uh, broke this part of the story anyway. Kinzinger was on the board of a Ukraine organization that scammed people of millions of dollars. Oh, interesting. Huh. No wonder he had maybe, and we don't know his exact you know, ties to it. He was on the, he was on the board of this group that scammed people, uh, millions of dollars from people. Is that why he's actively pushing for more war in Ukraine? They could raise more money? We don't know. We're just raising the question. Uh, according to the Post Millennium, uh, top Ukraine volunteer soldier revealed to be fraud, heavily promoted by Adam Kinzinger and Malcolm Nance. So we're just cracking the surface on this fraud and where the money was flowing out of the Biden administration into Ukraine, who's getting their hands on it, who's getting these weapons and then reselling them, lining their pockets, making millions of dollars and all with, you know, because they put a Ukrainian flag pin on and they changed their Twitter profile. And then if you question them, then you're you're somehow not patriotic. You're a Putin apologist. You're a Putin apologist for yes. asking these questions. Yeah. I guarantee those people are volunteer by self-admission only. That's right. By the way, uh, joke of the year so far in 2023 from Philip. That very, was a good one. That was yeah, good. That was very good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have my moments. You get the points today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.